In this video, I will show you how you can run FFmpeg commands directly from hosted N8N instance without installing anything, without installing servers, without installing FFmpeg. And the way we do it is by using Rendy, which is an FFmpeg API, which allows us to send HTTP requests to run FFmpeg commands without us having to pre-install. During the demo, we will be following a process where we take an input video that is hosted online. We use an FFmpeg command that transfers this video into a GIF with Rendy. And then we can demonstrate the GIF, we can use it, we can sort, we can do what we want with it. I will also show you how you can use webhooks in this process and also how you can delete files that you've used and you don't need anymore. So what we're going to do now is create an NA10 workflow which takes in an input video and from it creates a GIF with an FFmpeg command that it runs in Rendy. Now this is quite simple. We actually already have most of the stuff prepared in Rendy's dashboard in the tutorial. So what I want to do in this process, I want to take the input file from a Google Sheet. I want to pass it on to the FFmpeg command and then I want to get the output file and sort into Google Sheet. Now it will look like this. I have here in my sheet prepared. There's the input video file. These are the placeholders for the output GIF and the file ID, which we'll use later for deleting. And this is the video that we're going to be using to create GIF from. So if I play it here, and this is playing, and we're going to take the first minute of the video and create a GIF from it. This is about a three minute video. We'll take the first one. An important thing to notice here is this URL. This is a publicly available URL, which I can open also in private mode with no login, with nothing, it's accessible to me. So you will have to use it also if you want to send files to Randy because Randy needs to be able to pull your files from wherever they are. In order for it to be able to pull, the file needs to be accessible or more the URL of the file needs to be accessible. You could also use um, S3 signed URLs if you want. Um, anything that is available for Randy to download that you could also try to download with an incognito mode or an unlogged in, unidentified user. So. I'm taking uh, this Google Sheet and going here. My first step will be a manual trigger. Um, but you can use your own, you can use webhooks here, you can use part of a workflow when somebody inserts a new file into your Google Sheet, you want to listen to that. In my case, it's just the first raw. I'm taking the Google Sheets node and here I want to get rows in a sheet. And my account exists already and I want a sheet within a document get rows and the document is n8 and demo and from list it's cheat one this is it let's execute and see that we get the file perfect we have the input video file we continue we create an http request this one is a post request and here the nice thing here you can use rendy's tutorial to do everything so i'm going to go to the main rendy dashboard and this is the page you get right after sign up and here, actually, this component here using Rendy's REST API, this is a full tutorial on how to use Rendy. And specifically, this tutorial is built for getting in an input video and from it extracting a GIF loop of the first minute of the input video, which is exactly what we want also for our NA10 demo. First of all, let me explain to you maybe what we're seeing. So this is a post request to run FFmpeg command in Rendy. And in the body, we have the full FFmpeg command. You can see it here. It has the minus I, the input file, the filter for creating the GIF, and then the output. Now, I hope you can see everything. This is the full filter for creating a GIF from the first minute of the video. And here is the output file. Now, a few things to notice here. The input and output files, they're specified separately. This is on purpose. Rendy needs to be able to download your files. So in order to do that, we have a full mechanism running and working on it. And this is why you need to specify your input files separately from the command so that we could download everything that is required. Another thing to notice is the output file also you can you need to specify it's just a file name. It needs to be alphanumeric and dot of course and whatever extension that you require. And then the FFmpeg command itself, we don't specify the prefix FFmpeg. We don't need to because Randy does it internally. We just start from the minus side, the minus input section. We specify the placeholder for the input, the first input file. This is here. And these um, curly brackets placeholders should be familiar uh, because in NA10 they use the same. And I will show you in a second also how to specifically use this placeholder in NA10. And the output file is the same. We again specify the placeholder because there could be several output files. So we want to know which one. And we write it here. Now what we can do is we can first copy the URL, put it into our N8N HTTP module node, and the URL is actually already pasted here, I see. 
Then we copy the body, and this is JSON. Uh -huh. I just want to be using a JSON, put it here. And immediately we run into some stuff. I'm gonna go back to it soon. Um, another thing we have here is the headers. So this component in Rendy is like Postman, exactly the same. And like every other RESTful client that you can use, it has the body and it has the headers. So you can use that as a reference and just copy from here into your um, NA10 node. And you just send headers here, press that one, specify the API key. And we want the content type to be JSON. This is a JSON. Okay, now the important step here is this part and I wanna take some time for it. So we already see here something is marked in red. What is this? So maybe I'll show you first how I specified the input file from the Google Sheets and that'll make everything clear. So this is our previous node which has the Google Sheets specification. The input video is here and we're gonna put it inside. You see, curly brackets. So NA10 recognizes curly brackets as special characters and treats them as such. But in our case, we want to make sure that we're using the curly brackets specifically for Randy so, and that NA10 doesn't confuse it. So what you can do here is you add backslashes. Now, the reason I'm typing double backslashes is, is because we're writing a JSON here. And if you write with inside a JSON a string, this is a string because it's in between quotation marks. Um, you got to put the backslash double time, two times each time that you want to write a backslash. So this is what we're doing here. And also here. And this should work. Execute step. Perfect. Command has been sent to Randy for processing. The next step is to get the result of this command, and this is exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna add here another HTTP request. And again, I'm gonna look into Randy's dashboard, the tutorial, to see what is the next step. So I can run the same through Randy. So I'm just gonna send the same command and Randy in the dashboard. And again, I get the command ID. I press next. And there is the Paul command section. Uh, by the way, um, it's going to be written also in the description. Everything we're doing, you can use through the dashboard, but you can also always go to the documentation section in Randy. API references. And you have here the two API endpoints that we're using right now. One is run ffmpeg command, and the other one is Paul ffmpeg command. Now we're working on the Paul section, on getting the results of the command. So back to the dashboard. Here is the Paul request it's a get http request with the api key there is no body here because it's a get request i'm pressing send and this is the result of the command that we ran through the dashboard and we're going to do the same now in n8n so i'm copying this part into our n8n node the command id is the same one that we got from our previous post request in n8n where we sent the command so i'm going to use the id here now, sometimes um, NA10 adds, here we go, sometimes it adds um, extra spaces, so you wanna make sure you remove those. And let's just execute it and see if it's working. Probably it won't, right, because authorization failed. We need the API key. So, and again, I'm going here to the header. That's the API key. Copying it here. And now, if I execute, this should work. We got the full result, the command ID that we ran through in 8 This is the same command ID from the previous post request. We have here status success. We have the output file. It's here, there's the file ID and there's the storage URL. So let's use that and store this into our Google Sheet. I'm gonna add here, Google Sheet. And I want to update a row. And yeah, it's updating a row. That's good. That's good. From the list N8N demo. The sheet is the first one. Now, columns to match, you got to tell N8N on what row you want the update to be. And for that, it needs to match a, 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 cell, a specific cell value. So you tell it, I want to match the input video. 
and my input video was in the first get rows from the Google Sheet. So this is the input video. And my output GIF, which I want to update within Google Sheets, will be the result from my get request. And the result is here, and the command, and I want the storage URL. So this is this one. And I'm gonna also store, while we're at it, I'm gonna store the file ID, because soon I'm gonna show you how you can also, after you've finished using this file, you've finished everything, you can delete the file. So I'm just gonna store it here and execute. Now if everything works smoothly, there we go, it's saved into Google Sheet. And if I go to my Google Sheet, now I have the output GIF and the output file ID. Now if I open the output GIF, we see the resulting GIF from Randy. And basically this is it. We have created a full FFmpeg command workflow working in NA10 without installing anything. Now a couple of additions that could be useful here is sometimes a command can take a while to run. For example, this command that we use right now, the processing time was, total processing time was nine seconds. So you wanna make sure you do the get request after a sufficient amount of time has passed. So you maybe wanna add a sleep or a wait. So I think it's called wait here node. Yeah, there we go. So we can use the wait node. And what we can do here is basically we don't need this one. And before, oh, sorry. Uh, this was good. So the wait is before our get request and maybe actually I should put names here so it'll be easier for us. Get output file. So it will be a bit easier for us to track. Send command. And I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna put this here, put this here. And now it's screaming something is wrong because the placeholder for the command ID doesn't exist anymore. We're gonna use it again, I'm gonna delete it here. I'm gonna put it here. Execute the step to make sure it's working fine. Perfect, we have the result, all is good. So we have the file stored, everything is available for us to use, we can put it everywhere we want, we can download it, we can send it over to maybe social media or somewhere else where we wanna put this file, this output GIF into. So we wanna execute the full workflow now. Um, and last thing to notice before we're finishing is to make sure that the wait here is sufficiently long. So this should be, let's say 12 seconds and let's execute the workflow. While it's executing, I'm gonna delete this output here and hopefully it will work well. Updated in the row. The update exists, let's see and we have status success here. Now, once we have finished using our output file, we want to delete it from Randy. So in order to do that, this is another HTTP request that we sent to Randy. It's a delete request. In Randy's API reference, there is the delete file endpoint which we can use for that. So I'm gonna copy the URL from the endpoint here. Again, we're gonna put the API key here. And an important thing to notice, the result from Randy for delete fire is just a success, status 204, which is success with no nothing inside. We need to specify to N8N that our, where is this, the response is not auto detect, but it is text, okay? And the file ID that we want to use, we wanna use it as the file ID that we got from our get request. Now, again, need to make sure that we are deleting extra spaces. Execute step, authorization fail. Let's see what we miss, invalid authorization key. Something I missed here is that this shouldn't be query parameters, but headers. So I'm gonna put the API key as a header, not as a query parameter, of course. And make sure that the response is text, yes. And once everything is set, we're gonna press execute. Perfect, output is successful, there's no fields, the item exists, but they're empty because Randy does not return anything when it's successful, there's no error, which means it finished successfully. Another thing you can do with Randy is to, instead of polling for the output files and waiting before, you can specify a webhook in NA10 that will get triggered once the files have been processed with Randy and FFmpeg. Now, the way to do it is um, to create another 
NA10 workflow. So it's going to be a webhook trigger here. And it's going to be a post method. So Randy is sending a post request to your webhook endpoint. And NA10 has created for us something here. We'll press here listen for a test event because we're going to test it out also. And in Randy's dashboard, in the configuration section, you can specify the URL for your webhook. And then you press test webhook. And if all worked well, there we go. Our test succeeded and this is the result. Now what we can do here is listen to live. And it's going to be listening to created um, to finished commands. And I'm going to go to our original workflow and I'm going to execute it. I just want to remove from here the delete file because I don't want to delete it in the end. Execute workflow. And now, after the command was sent, once it's finished, it's going to trigger our new workflow here. There we go. And if we scroll down in the body section, we can find the output file. And this is the storage URL. Now, to read more about webhooks, again, you can go to Randy's documentation. In the documentation section, there is the webhooks area where you can read more about it and play with it. So this is the end. Um, you can always check the documentation for anything you might need. You can just use the search bar if you need or to search for stuff. There is the cheat sheet that we've created that specifies many different FFmpeg commands you can use for video automation. And the way to go about it is to basically just go into the cheat sheet and here there is the table of content and everything is here. And you can always search here, let's say zoom, and then you'll find the stuff that you need. In our YouTube, there are more tutorials on how to use Randy, how to run the FFMP commands, all without installing anything. So feel free to browse through. And if you have any requests or things you would like to see more of, uh, shoot down in the comments below. Thank you.